Which one is on? Can you hear me now? Our topic, could you turn it down just a little, please? People are not deaf. Our topic is regional coordination and cooperation. It is not regional integration in the sense of the European Union or the Soviet Union or the Eurasian Economic Union. It is coordination and cooperation. And the question is, is it advancing or not? Or are we just blah, blah, blah? I want to begin by quoting John Adams, one of the earliest advocates of independence for in America. And he was arguing the case for cooperation and coordination among very different states, very different states. And he said, and to understand this, I have to tell you, I know you all know this, but the word hang has two very different meanings. One is a hanging. The other is hanging together, working together. So John Adams said, either we hang together or we hang separately. That, it seems to me, is our subject here. And we couldn't have a better team to address it in, in very different experiences and backgrounds. And we're going to begin with Yerkin Trukuma, who is director of the Kazakhstan Institute for Strategic Studies under the president of Kazakhstan. An old friend, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Is it on? Do you hear me? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. <coughs> um, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to have a high-level conference. And uh, remember, Fred, we were sitting in your cozy home in D.C. and discussed the same subject last year. And nothing had changed since, since that time. We're still looking forward to more profound cooperation in Central Asia. Um, it's, um, we, we understand that all external and internal factors push all uh, five Central Asian states to more profound cooperation. It's not only about uh, water dilemma, border friction, and the uh, uh, disruption of uh, supply chain, but also geopolitical factors that push all, all of us <coughs> to more profound cooperation. I tirelessly uh, stand for uh, that destiny and the uh, destiny of all Central Asian states should be designed and uh, fulfilled only in, in the region, in, in Dushanbe, in Astana, in Bishkek, in uh, Tashkent, and Dushan, and, uh, and uh, in Ashgabat, not abroad of our region. So it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the main point of our regional cooperation. I do really appreciate the former C5 plus one. When we successfully cooperate on, re on different issues with, uh, with uh, superpowers like uh, United States, Russia, China, with middle powers like, um, like Japan, South Korea, etc. But I think that we have to strengthen our C5 dialogue. And we're already doing this, this, this job. And, but yet, I think it's, uh, it's still not enough. It's still not enough. And as the experts, we together with my colleagues from Central Asian states, with Mr. Norov, with, uh, with my colleagues from uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, other Central Asian states, we, we, we established effective second track diplomacy on expert exchange and cooperation. And uh, <clears throat> at least as experts, we can think, discuss, and act on new ideas of cooperation in Central Asia. Uh, and uh, 
I, in Kazakhstan, we share the common idea that what is good for Central Asia is good for Kazakhstan. And what is good for Kazakhstan is good for Central Asia. It's, um, uh, uh, it's a kind of common ground for better and uh, more profound cooperation in Central Asian space. And yet it's clear that in action, we lead to regional stalemate with uh, all problems in our pockets. Uh, for, for my um, presentation, I would like to, um, uh, to stop on, uh, I mean, what is uh, behind of the more profound cooperation in the region? Not only political and economic pragmatism, but also the rapidly changing social demographic situation. We are quite different from what we used to be in the 30 years ago. Uh, and uh, I will elaborate on it using the approach of a uh, quite famous Venezuelan scholar and former editor of foreign policy magazine, Moises Naim. He emphasized on three types of revolution, revolution of the multitude, revolution of uh, mobility, and the revolution of, of mentality. And all above mentioned revolution are taking place right now in the region and explain the unprecedented condition that's been changing the nature of power in Central Asia. So first, if you talk about the revolution of the multitude, the population of Central Asia is increased by almost 30 million people from 48, so 49 to 79 million. It's almost 80 million people living right now in Central Asian space. And so it, in 2050, it expected to be even more than 100 million people. So it, it's quite different region what we saw back in 30 years ago after the collapse of Soviet Union. So life, ex life expectancy is also rising, averaging 70 years. Poverty in de is declining, maybe in not linear fashion, but still declining. For example, Kazakhstan, the poverty rate in Kazakhstan fell from 65% in 2001 to about 8.5% in 2017. It's a profound change. In Tajikistan, the poverty rate continues to decline also from 37.4% in 2012 to 29% in 2017. And the, if we talk about the mobility revolution, the primary indicator is a the urbanization rate. And it's steadily increasing, reaching 45% in the region. And in Kazakhstan, for example, it amounts to 61%. It means that more and more people have, ac have access to, um, to better education, medicine, new technologies, and that's create a new foundation for, for new society in, in the region. Um, 91% of Kazakhstan and 78% of Kurdistan have uh, internet access. It's an alternative to the state opinion. So they have different approach to different issues, what's going on in the region. So more and more people have started to travel out of the home within the, the country and abroad. Not only labor migrants, but also students, tourists, schoolers to Russia, South Korea, United States, etc. More than 5 million migrants are working abroad, mainly in Russia, Turkey, and, uh, and uh, South Korea. So um, what, it, what does it mean? It means that the labor migrants depend very little on their states. And the situation inside their home countries more and more depends on their voice. For example, if quarter of Kyrgyz citizens in election in Russia their vote may change the balance of domestic political forces in Kyrgyzstan. And what is more importantly, mentality revolution. I can say for sure it's already a completely different region that it used to be 30 years ago. Um, the median age in 1990 was 34 years. Now it's 28 years in the region. In Kazakhstan, slightly older, the median age is uh, 31.7 years. But still, most of the population was born after the collapse of Soviet Union. 
So it's a completely different population, different attitude, different mentality. And um, they, in general, they align to all nostalgia towards former union. So they are different in perception on national identity, open to religion, and new technologies. So it's all together. So, for example, if we ask about what's going to be the, I mean, what language remains as a Franca lingua in the region, I would say that it's probably Russian language remains as a Franca lingua. But if you look broader, it's more promising to speak the language of innovation. TikTok doesn't, doesn't need any language, for example. Economic growth, democracy, and good governance. So in a nutshell, <clears throat> what we have, most of the region population is under 30, more mobile, more urbanized, more educated, with incomparable opportunities to get information and com communicate with the world as their parents did. And they naturally want a better a free life and are much more critical of power and bolder in expressing their will to remove barriers. So the revolution of, multi of uh, multiplicity, mobility, and mentality have also arrived in Central Asia, imposing a few challenges to existing models of public administration. I mean, we have to think about new approach, how we not only deal um, to strengthen our cooperation. Maybe we have to start with, with a scratch to understand our society. And uh, what already uh, Mr. Safoy Sap said about national, regional identity. Who we are? Are we identify ourselves first of all as a Kazakh, Uzbeks, etc., or Central Asian? I mean, it depends how we move quickly or faster on our regional cooperation in much more. And as you know, Fred, that we made a lot of efforts to cooperate in the region in, in more profound way uh, in 90s, it, in 2000s, but always we fail. So maybe we have, before we start, we, before we launch a new regional project, Maybe we have to see, maybe we have to understand what what were behind all these failures in the regional cooperation and start with the scratch to understand our region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We now turn to Ambassador Honorable Vladimir Nora. Uh, why do I pause? Because he could be introduced in a lot of different ways, and they'd all be relevant. He, he is from Bukhar, where he held public office. He was foreign minister of Republic of Uzbekistan. He served as the managerial brains of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization for many years, and we're very honored to have you here today in your new and independent role. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Leadership uh, Kamga Foundation for Transfer Foundation for invitation me to these uh, discussions uh, because it is great honor for me. I remember when I was first Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs in 2004 when Ms. Senator Sadiq Safai was Ministry with several meetings with Mr. Ramsfeld when he was minister, defense minister and visited. And last my meeting, when I met him, I remember he was not satisfied with such level of relationship in the United States with, with Uzbekistan and Central Asia because he understand the role of Central Asia for interests of United States interests in this time. And that's why maybe this was reason behind his initiative to put forward this foundation. And uh, I will be glad if my son, grandchildren, as uh, the Miss Sarah, follow his grandfather activity. My, uh, I have seven, seven grandchildren, and maybe one of them can follow me. I will be very glad. Today is symbolic day for me. First of all, it is birthday my oldest grandson, 15 June, 
at the same time, it is anniversary of Shanghai Cooperation Organization, Day of Creation of this organization. And I, and I would like to respond to your question. Is real regional integration uh, cooperation? And uh, it is blah, blah or not. If we're looking to now modern situation in the world, Certainly, Central Asian countries from the beginning of their independence face uh, big challenges to their sovereignty and uh, national uh, integri uh, territorial integrity. But today, after overcoming neg negative impact of pandemia, uh, uh, our countries face it with the negative consequences, a global crisis of confidence. And the key challenge today is global strategic uncertainty. Uh, there is an increase in blocks, a fragmentation of system international relations, a return to the right of strong and refusal to recognize the sovereign equality of states. And uh, uh, the Central Asian region, located at the crossroad between the centers of geopolitical confrontation and economic activity, uh, should be emphasized that the Central Asia is at the intersection of the interests of uh, major uh, geopolitical uh, players. And today, the countries of the region are under pressure to make a choice in favor of one or another center of power. The presence of great powers in Central Asia is inevitable. Uh, and states of Central Asia are well aware of this. They are pragmatic and uh, use this fact of the presence of great powers to their interests. The countries of Central Asia strive to maintain balanced relations as far as possible with Russia and China and with the West. Moreover, geoeconomic competition is strengthening, uh, protectionism and sa uh, sanction policy are gaining momentum, uh, uh, the process of forming a new configuration of production and supply chain has intensified the, this provokes a break in traditional trade, economic, transport, and logistic uh, ties and intensifies competition for raw materials and financial resources, technologies, and investment. And uh, it can be noted that the con consequences of the coronavirus pandemic, as well as the threat of sanction imposed by individual countries to the uh, the Russian-Ukrainian conflict can and already have a negative impact on the economies of our countries. All these exacerbate the remaining common problems of Central Asia countries, transport isolation, energy and food security, a shortage of water resources due, due to climate change, risk of social tension against the backdrop of growing import inflation, as well as threat of terrorism, extremism, and uh, the, uh, drug trafficking. So, and that's why all Central Asian under, uh, countries today understand that only by cooperation uh, we can avoid this uh, or deal with these challenges to our countries. But it was from the beginning of independence several attempts last first two decades to establish some mechanism of regional uh, cooperation, but it is not working because there were uh, not yet, uh, I think, the as uh, uh, Mr. Frederick Starr in 2012 uh, raised a concern that Central Asian countries losing sovereignty, like such in some interview, I remember. But there was so uh, big, uh, the, but now it's different uh, situation and some Central countries uh, have not good relationship between each other. The mining borders with Tajikistan, Uzbekistan and not uh, resolve with the border uh, delimitation issues with the uh, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan and the Kyrgyz Republic issue the problem of transboundary water resources. It was strong. I was minister, I was head of our mission in the United, uh, European Union, and I remember as our top uh, uh, relationship on all these issues. But with the coming to the power, Mr. Shokhan uh, Mirziaev, as his presidency, the change the situation in the, not only in Uzbekistan, by liberalization of economy and uh, giving uh, some impetus to democratization reforms in our country. But at the same time, he announced that four, uh, 
the main priority of foreign policy of Uzbekistan it is Central Asia. And, uh, and he announced it on the 72nd General Assembly session, the initiative to establish consultative meeting of head of states. This year on September, we will have fifth consultative meeting of head of our state in Dushanbe. And this mechanism played an important role. It brought, it raised mutual trust, mutual understanding, and certainly to uh, unite common uh, potential for fighting the, the threat which we are facing today. The population of Central Asia is growing. Today we 78 million. In 2050, we will be 110 million. At the same time, we're facing the climate change, the shortage of the water, and melting uh, the ice, speedy melting. It is uh, the mountain area, it is lost 30 percent. At the same time, temperature higher in Central Asia than in other parts of the world with the climate change. And but uh, at the same time, life uh, giving to us more uh, challenges, surprise, with construction by Afghanistan in Kush Kushtepe can Canal. It takes 10 billion cubic meters. So uh, from two, two, 10 billion, it will be a big challenge too. At the same time, uh, what is important that uh, today, this uh, common approach to resolving the problem and using the potential uh, for uh, establishing security and sustainable development give its own positive result. First of all, uh, the, uh, we, if we're looking to Uzbekistan, we, the trade to our Uzbekistan rises three times, from 2.6 to 7.6 billion dollar trade to our with the Central Asian countries. And uh, today, Central Asian countries became third uh, trade partner after uh, uh, Russia, China. At the same time, five times rise the joint venture with the neighboring countries, from 350 uh, companies to 1,600. So big such impetus only in figure, if we're looking to this. What about unbelievable decision made by our leaders? First of all, in May, uh, two leaders, Tajikistan and President Uzbekistan, uh, give start to construction hydropower station on transborder river Zarabshan. And as Mr. Uh, Rahman said in this um, uh, meeting with, uh, in Tashkent, he said, every day, Uzbek Tajik border crossing 25,000 uh, 25, people. So, uh, such uh, policy, such uh, uh, our attitude of our leaders, supported by our uh, population, and, and uh, we see this focusing on uh, high using the potential of our regional market. But at the same time, uh, we're not satisfied with this level because it is perhaps 5-10% of from our trade turnover. Nevertheless, the, for the last five, six years, the uh, trade turnover of our countries rises two times to $200 billion. But we're not satisfied because internally it is not yet enough. The one of the challenge, main challenge, it is transport isolate, geographic isolation of our country. When I talk about Mr. Rumsfeld, I can say, as a military man, he understands always more better the role of geography than politi political leaders, maybe. That's why it is important to us, this uh, session and this discussion. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we will now cross the Amadaria and, and hear a, from a, a, one of our Afghan fellows, uh, and Sabihu uh, uh, Ziamal, as you all know, is an, an uh, entrepreneur. He is uh, served as chairman of the World Trade Center of Afghanistan. He's ex-director general for Afghanistan of the National Standards Authority. Uh, very glad to have your perspective on this issue. Thank you very much, sir. It's a great pleasure to be uh, in this humble forum with Mati and to be in this panel. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Abdullah Ziarmal, as Dr. Star mentioned. So uh, I used to be working uh, lastly in Afghanistan as a director general for Afghanistan National Standard Authority, but my main background is from uh, the business. Uh, for the past two decades, I used to be engaged in terms of uh, business projects, and I'm going to be focusing mainly on in terms of the regional coordination and what we can do and how we can move from 
words to action uh, by means of doing some practical businesses on the ground in terms of supporting and promoting the regional coordinations and cooperations uh, within our region. Uh, this camp car is a great example of regional coordination indeed. That every year, so we have this platform in order to discuss our shared interest in terms of the businesses, opportunities to discuss our challenges in terms of regional development projects, which we need and it's not in the ground, and as well as in order to discuss the, our shared risks in terms of safety and security of our people, our borders, and as well as the security, uh, the food security, energy security, and job security uh, for our countries and our nations. Uh, definitely, we're the state that we have to be focused more on regional coordination, but only coordination is not going to be sufficient. In the previous years, uh, e even within the campaign uh, network events, we used to be discussing about regional integration. We used to discuss about regional cooperation, regional integration of projects. And uh, unfortunately, uh, so far, we were not, I mean, the entire region was not able to uh, to implement a very successful regional integration economic project for the best interest of our region. So therefore, uh, it's good to just back up and start discussing about coordination, but definitely we have to move on for cooperation. And finally, uh, we have to see that how we succeed in terms of coordination and cooperation, and if we need an integration, and as an example, for example, as like an, a, a European Union, or at least to be at a very uh, uh, good mood of cooperation and collaboration as an Asian country's model. I would suggest that I can see a great potential in this region and specifically as we see that Kazakhstan is, is, is a more open for business in terms of the business regulations. We can see there's a lot of uh, business sector has been regulated in Kazakhstan. Uh, existence of the Astana International Financial Center as a capital market, that's another great opportunity for our region. And uh, I would uh, suggest, and I can see that Af Kazakhstan could take uh, the, uh, the lead as a rule model in order to further coordinate and create cooperation among our nations uh, in the region. As a small example of how to move from words into actions, uh, I can say, give an example of the coordination and cooperation and moving from words to action for the Kamka Fellows. Among the Kamka network, we've got some working groups. Um, I'm part of the Kamka business group and we've got 70 members in this business group. And we were supposed to have an early morning meeting at 7.30 in the morning. And we had a pre-discussion about that one that, okay, the subject of matter to discuss is supposed to be discussed at how to move from words to action, what we have to do as the business uh, people within this group. Uh, this morning, early, we couldn't uh, make it, but for sure it's part of already the, our agenda, the sideline agenda, that we're gonna have this meeting. And uh, personally, I proposed an idea, which was uh, luckily uh, uh, welcomed by uh, most of the members in this group. So the idea that we're gonna discuss about it, that okay, let's start for a practical, business uh, cooperation project. Let's put a trust fund among these members of this business group, create a trust fund, let's create a, a, a board of directors, let's appoint a secretary general, let's utilize that fund and take it forward into some financial institutions, it could be Asana Financial Center or commercial banks, to raise the fund and let's bring in practical business ideas in terms of regional cooperation and collaboration and let's apply it as an example. So we're serious about that one, we're definitely gonna be discussing about that one, that how to take it forward. Additionally, what I'm suggesting, Dr. Sir, for the next uh, Kamkan Networks, which next year is gonna be in Kyrgyzstan, I would suggest that right from this year, we have to start, Kamka has to start calling for best, our, our best projects of regional cooperation in terms of business. So there should be a call that businesses from the region, they have to bring in, they have to nominate their best practices, business, business, business ideas in terms of promotion of regional cooperation, regional collaborations. And for every year within the company uh, 
forums that one of the one, two, or three top projects of business cooperation has to be uh, selected and it has to be appreciated and awarded uh, by the Camp Camp. Do, do I have time to move on? I have time. Okay. So this is, uh, this could be one of the uh, examples. Uh, apart from that one, in terms of the privatization which was discussed in the previous uh, panel, that is something which is very important. So we see that there is a lot of political turmoil happening in our region, specifically when you're looking into Afghanistan right now, unfortunately. There is a de facto government uh, within Afghanistan. So that our cooperation definitely has to happen in two levels. At the political level and at the economic level, where the businesses has to take the lead and drive our economies. No matter of how good or bad is the political practices happening in our region. So the business has to work for everyone, every time, and at, at any time. In the good times and the bad times, we have to make sure that the business is working. One of the great opportunities is going to be about the regional transit and transport projects. Our company, like last week... Excuse me, that will be the topic of the session after lunch. Okay. That, great. The, the transport is very important. Uh, so, uh, as just an example, uh, I would say this one, and then I'm going to be concluding my, uh, my talks. Uh, in terms of uh, cooperation and collaborations, as I mentioned, it has to happen in the business community. Unfortunately, I don't see a lot of examples like, for example, joint venture companies of the subject countries in the region. So we have to form specific potential joint ventures of the companies of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Kyrgyzstan, the entire region. And even the cooperation at the Kamka region, it has to start from the Central Asia first, as it was, this one more, uh, as it was mentioned that uh, by one of the uh, participants that let's say that the Uzbeks and Kazakhs they have to accept each other they should not be rigid so there shouldn't be exclusion there should be inclusive coordination and talks first of all from the Central Asia then it has to move to bring in Mongolia then the Caucasus Afghanistan has to be the last and it could be the last thank you thank you very much I would like to take a moment to pose a question to all four of our excellent panelists. Uh, how many of you have been to the Caribbean or to the South Pacific? Nice places, these beautiful little islands, right? And they're, they're, they're wonderful to visit, especially if you like seafood or if you sail or like sunning. These both have institutionalized their cooperation and co collaboration. They have, in both cases, they have organized structures. They have secretariats for their interaction. It's not left to chance. It's, uh, they, they've structured it. They have not merged nations, Lyanya Narodov, the old Soviet idea. That's not what they're talking about. They, they are talking about institutionalized cooperation institutionalized uh, collaboration. Now, my question is this. Central Asia produced in the 90s a remarkable institution. It was the Central Asia Economic Union. This was created by the president. And, and they all joined. Uh, Turkmenistan didn't because of its neutral status, it was very careful, but it was nonetheless closely affiliated and, and in contact with it. Now, this was so successful that outsiders wanted to become observers, especially young Mr. Putin. He joined it uh, as an observer. They couldn't say no, even though it was a regional organization. It wasn't inviting outsiders. And then two years later, he said, I'd like to join it as a member. And they were not in a position to say no. So he became a member. And then two years later, he created the Eurasia Economic Union and destroyed the Central Asia Economic Union. Now, what I want to ask him, when I ask, why not some institutionalization of cooperation. 
I'm not talking, again, I'm not speaking about Slyanya Narodu. I'm, I'm not talking about some big political deal. I'm talking about institutionalized cooperation and collaboration. Is this failure to do this, is this a re reaction to this experience in the 90s? And if so, isn't it time to get over it? Well, I think that um, the question of institutionalization is not a, the biggest challenge for Central Asian states. We already, we have, we have um, quite unsuccessful exper experience of institutionalization, but it's not a barrier to move forward for sure, but uh, how we can, by institutionalization, remove all these barriers within the regions? That's the big, big, biggest question. I, I think that we are almost ready, all, all five Central Asian states, to institutionalize our um, cooperation. We already set up um, this informal uh, uh, high-level um, meetings in the region, and we are on the way to institutionalize all this, um, all our efforts. And structures, everything. But uh, the, 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 the main challenge is that we are quite different right now. After 30 years of development, we, we built different model of economic and political, I mean, we built quite different economic and political models. That's why we have to understand how we start with mitigation of all these differences between each let, other. Let me ask you. Uh, let, let me, let me finish, please. Uh, for example, how we can um, start to cooperate within the region in terms of transportation, if I have to fly from Astana to Ashgabat via D Dubai or Istanbul. That's, a, that's a, I mean, there is a lot of question how we can make through of all of these barriers. But let me, let me respond to this and, and pose this further question. Look at ASEAN. Their differences are 100 times greater within ASEAN than in Central Asia, or Central Asia and the Caucasus, or Central Asia, Caucasus, and Afghanistan. 100 times greater. There are Buddhist societies, there are Muslim societies, there are capitalist societies, there, there are virtually communist societies, and yet they cooperate effectively and have common organizations. So why? I don't buy your argument. I don't, you need to ex convince us. Well, it's, of course, it's up to you to buy or not, but <laughs> this is our reality. We have different models of, as I already mentioned, political and economic models. We have different um, um, uh, law norms. And all this poses a lot of challenges to our Central Asian cooperation. But, I mean, there is nothing, um, there is nothing, I mean, um, we, we have to overcome all these uh, barriers. And the first, the first um, um, kind of factor of more profound cooperation is political will, what you already mentioned. So there is already political will of all our presidents. There is a quite different society, what I already mentioned in my, uh, in my presentation, that we, we are dealing with very different completely different uh, uh, demography, what we used to be uh, in 30 years ago. So there is a, everything, I mean, all these reasons, all these um, conditions um, for much more profound cooperation. So let's start with some baby steps and move forward. Uh, but I mean, that's not, that's not gonna be kind of pinky promises what we used to be uh, dealing with uh, 90s or 20s. That's a completely different situation. It's, it's going to be much more challenging than it used to be. That what, what I was trying to say in your, my, my presentation. Thank you. If I may add here, I think uh, one of the reasons is uh, that we are still in our uh, evolution. 
right? And I can bring an example of the private sector, since I'm representing the IFC and IFC primarily works with the private sector. We see that there is a change in uh, generations happening and it brings completely new uh, realities, you know. So um, the, same, the same is happening probably on the political side. So uh, my short answer would be that we are still undergoing the evolution process. We are coming to that. Uh, we, will, we will not be able to avoid uh, regional cooperation because, first of all, we have uh, same uh, uh, same opportunities for growth, like same uh, areas for growth, which are water, energy, transportation. Uh, we have the same challenges here, which is the climate change, and those things are interrelated. And as long as we will continue uh, trade among each other, as long as we will continue to uh, cooperate, meet, discuss, those interdependencies will grow. And as a, as, as a matter of fact, uh, more interdependent you are, in the private business at least, more you're willing to discuss and negotiate and to cooperate. And I believe that this is, will be the case in our case too. Thanks. I want to introduce properly, as I didn't okay. earlier, Bruce Latavos, who, who is at the IFC. And that's one of the key institutions that we're all, all addressing here. Could you go into this a little bit further from a Tachi perspective? not an IFC, but how Tajikistan views this collaboration and cooperation? I think uh, the, the story of collaboration can be divided to prior 2016, 17 and after that, right? When uh, uh, with the new leader of Uzbekistan, the things have, have, have changed completely. And uh, it immediately created uh, uh, an extended opportunities for, 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 for the country, for the private sector in our countries, for opportunities to trade. And uh, um, I think that's, that's, that's set up a, a very good ground for uh, continuous development. And frankly speaking, if, uh, and Mr. Norov uh, mentioned that, if you would tell me uh, seven, eight years ago that uh, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan will be investing into hydropower projects, in Tajikistan, I would laugh out loud. Yes. But it's not only the case with Tajikistan. The good thing is that uh, Kazakhstan and uh, Uzbekistan are also are willing to invest into projects in Kyrgyzstan as well. Right. And uh, taking into account that we have all aspirations to become middle income economies uh, in some time in the future, which actually requires to double or in some case increase five times electricity consumption, that's a good sign. And I think uh, and, and I think that um, uh, more interdependent we will be in terms of the roads, in terms of the uh, electricity, in terms of water, in terms of the social uh, capital, uh, etc., and so on and so forth. We will be able to uh, to build a stronger institutions and stronger uh, mechanism to cooperate. One further question. I don't want this to go uh, un uh, uh, unaddressed, and that is relations with, with the new government in Afghanistan. This is a key issue for, your, for, for you in, in Tajikistan, a key issue for you in, and for you. Uh, to what extent is this a break, or is it a, a break on cooperation and collaboration, or is it instead a stimulus to potential? Um. I can share only my own personal opinion because I'm not in a position to comment that. I think uh, what the uh, Tajik government wants is to have a government in Afghanistan that, uh, that, that brings under the on the same table representatives of all, popul of all members of society of Afghanistan. Uh, not only Tajiks, but Uzbeks, uh, Tur Turkmens, and uh, Kyrgyz, and uh, others as well. I think that uh, this is the process that needs to be uh, overcome as well, because Afghanistan uh, is not only a, a neighbor who has the longest border with us, it's uh, also a source of both threats and opportunities for us, right? If you look down, if you look to the south, uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan is the shortest way to the seas for us, to the seaports. I think uh, if you look from the security standpoint, we see that there is a, a, a thousand kilometer of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, territories between us and uh, anything can inf infiltrate from that side. From that st standpoint, we, uh, I believe that the government is concerned. But I, I see that at the same time that we in the Central Asia 
have more and more uh, private sector of Afghanistan coming and investing. We see that our trade is increasing with Afghanistan because there is a demand. It's like uh, 30, 40 million of people who consume. So I think it's a good ground to cooperate to. What about Uzbekistan looking across? Is, do you see prospects for coordination and even institutionalization with uh, the Afghans or not? Thank you very much. As our countries of more than 3,000 years stated, in accumulated rich wisdom of life. And one of them, when they say, after you, uh, uh, after you have learned yourself in hot water, plow on cold water. You understand, I think everyone understands. Because we, after two decades, attempt to institutionalize our Central Asian cooperation of, uh, and uh, collaboration, and it's not successful. That's why we came to such format consultative meeting, which is not have any supranational some structure, and at the same time there is not any charter of this, but only some uh, document which we uh, adopting and the in framework of this consultation meeting, and at the same time we developing mechanism of cooperation, ministerial meeting, inter-regional meeting, uh, and bordering types, and several such partnership uh, mechanism. But at the same time, if we, the Euro have not secretariat, but the fact that we have, because each uh, uh, meeting which we're organizing in each country, they take presidency and at the same time organizing all events. For example, Tajikistan, this year had two special conferences dedicated to Central Asian cooperation because they preparing themselves for presidency. And that's why it is important to uh, take experience ASEAN, you rightly said. Our consultative meeting only five years but ASEAN, more than 15 years. That's why step by step, in this uh, direction, by initiative of President Uzbekistan, was established International Institute for Central Asia, which the main task of this institution, where six months I was ahead of this institution, I say that it is focused on deep analyzing the situation in Central Asia and all challenges and opportunities, and, pre pro and prepare some proposal to our leaders to for further strengthening cooperation and uh, uh, establishing security and sustainable development in our region. That's why we coming to this situation. If Afghanistan, Afghanistan, it was first uh, by coming to the power, Shavgat Mirzai's announced that Afghanistan, geographically, ethnically, historically, and many other aspects is a part of Central Asia. And Uzbekistan and as other Central Asian countries now doing a lot for helping to Afghan people in surviving in very tough time today because the freezing more than eight billion dollar of Afghan money it is became the big challenge. We see the Taliban uh, government uh, today try to resolve some problem, and at the same time it is reality that we should work with them. It was your idea that uh, nevertheless you not recognize them, but you should work with. And this is our engagement with Afghan uh, recent government to give its positive some uh, result. For example, uh, in northern Afghan side, the girls can go to school. We are established special free trade zone, 2,000 hectare plant on border area with Termes, where Afghan business people can come without visa and begin their business for the Uzbek of Olin. We supplying with the ener energy, electropower, all infrastructure giving to them, uh, and all needed material for developing their business. We supplying every uh, year during year humanitarian support. But more important, what we see it as uh, our uh, the using the Afghan territory for transporting our goods to Pakistan and India. First time after the uh, coming uh, in the history of Afghanistan we could possible to transport 120 ton of goods by trucks from India to Uzbekistan. And today, Uzbek drivers uh, uh, riding and uh, through Afghanistan to Pakistan and back. What is important, we could see that the Taliban could be uh, more successful than Ashraf Ghani government in collecting money from tax. They fight it against uh, corruption. On board the Hairaton, it is where transportation main uh, links are going. 
from Uzbekistan, Pebnes, Missouri, Sharif Railroad, they ten, uh, several times rise their income. In the time of freezing money, they are now resolving uh, the budgetary issues. That's why uh, Afghanistan can play an important role for all Central Asia for avoiding uh, geographic isolation. That's why initiative of our president to construct railroad, Pernes, Mazari Sharif, Kabul, Peshawar, supported by all our neighboring countries. And Kazakhstan leadership expressed it last year in Chalpanata that uh, Mr. Takayev said that we will participate in construction of this railroad. It will give big impetus for developing Central Asian countries because 60% uh, of uh, uh, price of goods for us, it is transport costs. This is important. I would like to uh, uh, final question. Uh, you have made a very persuasive, persuasive case. You all have that even though there's not any overriding uh, secretariat or, or or structure of cooperation or coordination, that there's a lot happening, and and it's a very important point. I, I'm wondering if if. Kamka group might work with your institute to catalog all this, mm. to identify what's really going on in every area and get it all on paper and so we can, we can examine what are the factors that have grown up through this interesting process that's embraced every country. Uh, we, we don't know. We all have impressions, but I think if we knew what are the various functional structures that are arising from uh, these various points of initi initiation. If we knew that, we could then figure out much more easily how to proceed in the future, would you? Yeah. Well, thank you for Let me think about it. But this, I think this is a promising idea. Uh, do I need to, to, uh, to say about something Afghanistan? Even though we don't share the common, uh, the, 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 the common border, we are facing the same threats and opportunities from this country, coming from this country. Um, um, we have to cooperate with this country because we can't isolate ourselves from Afghanistan and we should cooperate with this country uh, in pragmatic way, in, in, in the way of security, in, in many ways. Uh, uh, the question is, it's, it's, I think it's very interesting for me as, as well, how Afghan people perceive Central Asia. I mean, do they think, do they perceive themselves as a part of Central Asia region or not? So it's all you um, uh, closer to South Asia, South Asia region. Uh, we have to cooperate with Afghanistan, for example, first of all, we have to find some ways as a landlocked countries to, to the global markets, to South Asia markets, very promising markets, India and Pakistan, it's very interesting. We have to build some railroads in Afghanistan or roads. We have to educate Afghani students in Kazakhstan. Maybe we already, we already did, uh, we already gave a, a thousand scholarships for, for Afghan people. Maybe we have to, start another program for another 1,000 or 2,000 scholarship giving Afghan, uh, Afghan people, especially women. Maybe we have to persuade our Afghan uh, partner, uh, partners to respect um, uh, human rights and uh, women especially. I don't know, we have to cooperate in many ways. Or in water issue, we share the same river, Amudare River, and you, once they start taking more and more water from Afghan, from uh, Amudre River, that may pose a lot of challenges to ecological system in in, in, in Central Asia. And that's another uh, that's another option for Central Asia to cooperate on a route. So look, there are a bunch of questions we don't have answer for for right now, but we have to think about it. Very quick comment, a uh, response from uh, Afghan perspective on these various. Thank you. Uh, I would like to respond to this question uh, with a very famous quote from Iqbal Lahuri, which is saying that, 
افغانستان در آن دل است از فساد او فساد آسیا در گشاد او گشاد آسیا so it means that Afghanistan Asia the, the Asia region is a, is a territory of clay and soil which Afghanistan is a part of now from the corruption of Afghanistan we see the corruption in the Asia and from the development of Afghanistan we see the development in Asia I do remember back in 2019 in the Kamkar network where Senator uh, Safarov was also there, we had a very detailed discussion about if Afghanistan is part of Central Asia or the South Asia. Based on that famous quote from the Iqbal Lahori, so we can say, and we came to the conclusion even at that time, that we are the heart between Central Asia and the South Asia. So we are a connecting force, a connecting territory, connecting the Central Asia and the South uh, Asia. This, this regard to the current situation in Afghanistan, that it's a very complex situation a situation of engagement and recognition. So there is no recognition of the de facto government in Afghanistan. But in spite of that one, the reality is that there, we see some engagements from the regional countries, from the uh, international countries, with the de facto uh, government in Afghanistan. What is important, this regard to the current complex situation of no legitimacy, no recognition, no constitution in the government. So country is there, territory is there, nation is there, business are there let the businesses to work and still we have to keep pushing the uh, strong forces of cooperation at the business level and we uh, in terms of uh, economic uh, cooperation and uh, coordination thank you i want to thank all our panelists for a very provocative discussion of a of a permanent issue and that is how to move from general affirmations to permanently structured dialogue and cooperation and coordination. We'll be continuing with this theme and perhaps you will consider cataloging everything that's going on in this important area. And meanwhile, ladies and gentlemen, please come forward for a group photograph. <laughs>